Welcome to today's episode of The Open Heaven. Today is Friday, October 29th, and our title is Timely and Cheerful Giving. Again, I welcome you to the Redeemed Christian Church of God, New Covenant Parish, Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. The book we are studying from, The Open Heavens, is written by Father in the Lord, Pastor E. A. Adeboye. And again, the title for today is Timely and Cheerful Giving. I take that again, Timely and Cheerful Giving. Today is Friday, October 29th. Let's look at our study together. Timeliness is one of the major conditions for offerings to be accepted by God. As we see in our Bible reading of today, some people went very early to the sepulchre to anoint the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, but we had already he had already risen. Sorry. He had already risen. So when they go there to try and anoint his body, they couldn't find the body. Why? Our Lord Jesus Christ had risen up. Which means he, he said it for on the third day he was gonna rise, but they didn't understand what he was telling them. You know, he was telling them that this temple I will break this temple down, and in three days I will build it. And the people were wondering what, what, what nonsense is this, but they never understood that the temple he was referring to was his body, and that temple was taken down. And the third day he arose. So while they were going there to try and anoint him, my Lord has risen. May the Lord rise in your life today in Jesus name. Their offering was late. A few days to the crucifixion of Jesus Christ, however, a woman had been criticized for anointing Jesus' feet with an expensive ointment. Now that woman at timing was good because she did her own thing before the crucifixion while these other people were coming after the crucifixion even when he had already risen. Now this woman was 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 basically criticized. They criticized him that what, what, what kind of thing is this? A expensive white you're using to anoint a man's feet, using your hair to rub his feet. You know, people could not understand this. Despite the criticism, Jesus said in Matthew chapter 26, verse 10 to 12, Why trouble ye the woman? A question. For she hath wrought a good work upon me. For ye have the poor always with you, but me ye have not always. For in that she had poured this ointment on my body, she did it for my barrier. Wow. So while somebody is coming after I was crucified, died, to anoint him, and they were too late, this woman did it while he was alive. But she did it, and Jesus Christ recognized it that she had done this for his barrier. In other words, timing is important. The timing of events, the timing at which the woman did as, makes all the difference. And to that, the title for today is about timely and cheerful giving. Timely and cheerful giving. It's good to note that our memory verse is from Ecclesiastes 3 verse 1. As we continue our study, Ecclesiastes 3 verse 1 says, To everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. The earth is under the heaven. The earth is the Lord and its fullness thereof. The world and those that dwell therein. According to our book of Psalm 24 verse 1. Okay? Now, it's not telling that for everything there is a season and there is a time to every purpose, to everything under the the heaven. In other words, the earth as well. The disciples came to the resurrection morning to anoint Jesus. However, he had resurrected. Hallelujah. The angels asked the disciples who went to the sepulchre and an important question actually, why seek ye the living among the dead? Because he's no longer dead. Why are you seeking the living among the dead? Wow. That's the book of Luke chapter 24 verse 5. Whenever the Holy Spirit asks you to do something, no matter how illogical it may sound, please do it properly and cheerfully. It's very important. Timing is of the essence when it comes to instruction from the Holy Spirit. If you refuse to do it in that particular time, you might miss out on a very big miracle or signs and wonder. So time is of the essence. When instruction comes from the Holy Spirit, 
know that there is a time that that institution needs to be carried out. And if you fail, there is a chance someone else would carry out the instruction and receive the blessing to which you have missed by not carrying out that instruction. So there is always a time. God is a God of order. If you procrastinate, it may be a belated offering or service. The disciples did their own late. It becomes belated. And he has already risen. To the point the angel had to ask them, why are you looking for the person that is why are you looking for the person that is already alive among the dead? Why are you looking for the living among the dead? Why? Because they were late to what they were ought to do. Again, furthermore in our story. The disciples who came to anoint Jesus went back with their perfumes because the Lord was no longer in the grave. Also, some people are in the habit of piling up their tithes for two or three months. Sometimes even longer. You pile up your tithes, you pile up your tithes, but you never know why. Maybe the January tithes you ought to pay would have been the very uh, trigger for your blessing that was supposed to happen to you in February. Now you delay the time of paying that tithe. You delayed it in January. You pile it up to February to match the blessing you ought to receive in January and February is being procrastinated as well, if not cancelled. May the Lord help us in Jesus' name. Some say, I borrow my tithe to pay later. What does that mean? That's not biblical. That's not in any doctrine of Jesus Christ or doctrine of God. This is why some lose their reward of tithing, giving unacceptably, not as and when due. Our offerings also extend to our kind gesture to needy brethren. James 2 verse 15 to 16 says, If a brother or sister be naked and destitute of daily food, and one of you say unto them, Depart in peace, be ye warmed and filled, notwithstanding ye give them not those things which are needful to the body, what does it profit? It doesn't profit anything. They actually come to you for help. You, 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 you tend to take things out of context and be like oh the lord will bless you the lord will open the doors for you the lord will provide for you yes we know that the brother knows that that sister knows that but it comes to you for physical needs that he probably thought you could grind that to him or her if you are in that capacity of rendering that why being super spiritual don't you think that brother understand all the spiritual words or those spiritual things before coming to you Sometimes, maybe the Lord or the Holy Spirit actually directed them to you and you failed. Because the Lord God knows that you are in the best position and you have the capacity to render such help. But you failed. Then you start speaking some spiritual words or spiritual sermons of encouragement. What are you encouraging? May the Lord help us in Jesus' name. May the Holy Spirit continue to guide us and may we obey Him promptly as we journey from this world to our eternal home with Christ. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Brethren, sister, as you're watching today, I encourage you, listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit. Act promptly when giving. And the Lord will help you, guide you, direct you, and you shall manifest signs and wonders in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for joining me today. I hope you have a better understanding and a clarity of understanding that timely time is of the essence in God's kingdom. And timely and cheerful giving is a very important thing for us to do as Christians. And we should not defer our tithes. We should learn to pay our tithe as of when due. And may the Lord help us as we obey and hear His word and abide by it in Jesus' name. I hope to see you tomorrow as we continue our study, the open end.